G'day everyone, and welcome to Lubrication Explained. Today we're going to be talking about the SAE engine viscosity grades. So really important for a lot of passenger vehicles, and hopefully this will explain the sort of naming convention. So first of all, who are the SAE? So it's the Society of Automotive Engineers. Uh, it's a US-based organization founded in the early 1900s, which is obviously the very beginning of the sort of modern vehicle engine age. Uh, they've expanded a lot. They're now sort of a learning organization for a lot of automotive professionals, and they set a lot of the standards. Um, specifically, the ones that we're interested in are the parameters around multi-grade oils and their viscosities. So how to read SAE grades is relatively simple. So there's, it consists of two numbers. The first relates to cold temperature performance. So the W you can think of as standing for winter. And the W signifying winter is because back in the day, especially in really harsh environments like Canada or some, some parts of Northern America, uh, you would actually need to change uh, lubricant in your car depending on the season, and that's because the cold temperatures were so cold that your standard grades, uh, you know, weren't effective. The second number relates to regular service. So in this case, we're referring to the 20 grade. Now, there are actually monograde oils. So a good example of this would be in natural gas, stationary natural gas engines. Uh, they typically operate at SAE 40, um, so they're not a multi-grade oil. But most of the um, passenger vehicle, whether it be uh, petrol or diesel engines, they operate on a, on a multi-grade system. So in this example, we have a blended oil. It meets the low temperature limits of the 0W grade and the 100 degree limits for a 20 grade. What this means in practice is that if you were to look at a graph of oil viscosity and temperature, you know, we know, for example, that viscosity decreases with temperature. So the 0W grade would look something like this. The 20 grade is a bit thicker over, oh, you know, the temperature range. And 0W20 skips between the two. So it acts like a 0W at low temperatures and it acts like a 20 at high temperatures. Uh, we achieve this through the use of viscosity modifiers. And there are a class of additives which I'll go into in a little bit more detail in another video. So here's the actual classification system. And the first thing that you'll recognize is that all the winter grades kind of fit a certain uh, amount of criteria and all the standard grades fit a different set of criteria. So let's look at a little bit of those in detail and see what the differences are. So first of all, let's take these low temperature uh, winter grade specs and see what they mean. So with an engine, Okay, it's obviously when it's in operating condition, we've got lubricant flowing all around the engine and lubricating all the major components. However, when it's been stationary for a while, there isn't all that much lubricant in the system to protect the engine. Obviously, we have some in the oil pan, but that's about it. Everything else is sort of drained into the sump. So with low temperatures, what we're concerned about is engine startup and protecting the engine at startup. So the low temperature cranking viscosity is a sort of measure of cold crank performance, which will allow the engine to sort of tick over when we when we turn the ignition. And that was specific to cold temperatures because at cold temperatures, the, the uh, viscosity of the lubricant increases by quite a lot. What we also want is pumping performance, right? So the oil pump, we want to make sure that it is capable of pumping oil at low temperatures to all the different parts of, of the engine. So if you were to take the cams as a really good example, um, when they're dry, they are still a very heavily loaded component. And if oil uh, weren't able to get to the cams and the cams were working dry for any amount of time, that can do a lot of damage to them. So we really need to make sure that the lubricant can flow quickly to all the critical areas. But finally, we don't just define a winter grade oil based on its cold temperature performance. It also needs to perform at operating temperatures. And so they set a minimum viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius. 
when you go to the high temperature performance side of things, we continue to set a minimum um, spec on the kinematic viscosity at 100 degrees, but we also set a maximum end. And that's because we still require sufficient viscosity to protect all the engine parts. Um, and as it goes across that threshold, then it starts to sit in a higher grade. The final uh, test is high shear viscosity. It's the HTHS uh, test. Again, this is something I'll have to explore in a lot more detail because it has a lot of a lot more emphasis um, over recent years, particularly as it relates to um, fuel economy and fuel consumption. Um, effectively, what it's trying to do is look at the effect of temporary viscosity loss in high shear. And so what happens is, um, let's say for example around the piston rings, the viscosity modifiers kind of lose their capacity uh, to hold viscosity and they do so temporarily. And so the high shear viscosity test is a measure of the temporary uh, degradation in kind of VI performance. So hopefully that's given you a bit of a flavor for, first of all, how to understand multigrade SAE viscosities, but also to understand the testing regimes which define the different viscosity grades. Thanks for listening. This has been Lubrication Explained.